straight to our studio discussion tonight. And we're talking about ethnicity and politics, how ethnicity is shaping our politics in this uh, continent, of course, which is Africa. Let me reintroduce our guest once again uh, very quickly. And we have uh, Javas Bigambo, who is a governance expert. We also have Mark Bichachi, who is a communication expert and doubles up as political analyst. We also have Hassan Kuchore, who is an anthropologist. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Thank you Good so evening, much. Yusuf. Thank Mark, you. Let, me, let me start with you, uh, Mark Bichach, and I have a quote here for you uh, that says, politics that's based solely on a tribe and ethnicity is politics that's doomed to tear a country apart. It's a failure, a failure of imagination. That is a quote by uh, former U.S. President Barack Obama. Do you agree with him? Absolutely. You know, one of the things that if you do a quick search across the world, mm -hmm. you'll quickly realize that any nation that has embraced division on either tribal lines or on uh, religious affiliation mm -hmm. or any, in fact, even on race, you'll find that that nation has torn apart. If you look at the United States of America today, the race uh, conversations that are going on are threatening to mm -hmm. pull this nation apart. The problem with any form of ethnicity is you can never never judge a human being by the activity of their parents before they were born. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is not who that person is. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is tribe does not exist as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Because if a Luo has a child by a Luya, what tribe is that child? And these are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. We cannot hold ourselves to the skin tone of our, or the color of, of our skin or the tribe of our parents mm -hmm. and expect a nation to move forward, it will always cause division. Mm -hmm. Javas, do you agree with Bichachi that this continent is doomed if our politics is over-ethnicized, perhaps? Well, Bichachi is trying to uh, run away from some <laughs> anthropological and sociological realities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what we see on the continent, mm -hmm. uh, the conflicts that we have witnessed, etc., and mm -hmm. even here in this country of ours, mm -hmm. we know very well that so much, including our politics, mm -hmm. continues to be increasingly shaped by matters ethnicity, mm -hmm. ethnic orientation, balkanization, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, to benefit even from our very own history yes. and even what has been documented in the world, I want to tether my arguments by a quote that was written and spoken by one of France's leading mm -hmm. uh, political philosophers, J.J. Rousseau, and he said, that man is born free, but everywhere he lives in chains. Mm -hmm. These chains are of a social nature, economic nature, and political nature. Mm -hmm. Today in this country, we realize that every political decision or conglomeration is based on ethnic, arithmetic, mm -hmm. and calculations. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the change that we are speaking to. Mm -hmm. A Kenyan author celebrated around the world, Ngugi Thiongo, mm -hmm. has written two very important books that I want to refer mm -hmm. and cite this moment. One is, termed, is titled Decolonizing the Mind, and the other is Remembering Africa. Mm -hmm. And he argues that Africa has been dismembered yes. by various issues, including ethnicity itself. And I'm sure that as we go on with this debate, mm -hmm. I'll try to cut pieces and slices from mm -hmm. these arguments. Uh, Mark, let me give you a chance to react to what Java said very quickly before I cross over to Asan. Javas, I'm not running from the reality of what we call tribal politics in Africa. I'm just trying to highlight the fact that a tribe does not exist. It's a figment of our imagination. Mm -hmm. Your tribe has never really helped you. It is something that you call, it's a societal chain, mm -hmm. and it is, holds you down because your mind is convinced that your identity is derived from your tribe, whilst it's not. But you Mark, see, allow, but you see, but you Mark, see. Mark, Mark, allow, allow, allow me to engage the anthropologist here who is with us in the studio. Now, Hassan, do you agree that ethnicity is something that is not in existence? Um, I beg to differ um, <laughs> because, I mean, Mark uh, gave the example of um, if a Luo marries a Luya, for example, mm -hmm. then you know what that does become. But, but um, <laughs> I would like to say that. Um, there, there are ways in which um, ethnicity or patri patrilineal uh, lineages particularly mm. are the ones that are used um, to perpetuate the mm. ethnicity <laughs> or, I mean, as he says, tribe, which I don't like to use because it has very negative connotations. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I'm a Luo, um, and I'm, my father is Luo and my mother is Luya, then I would, I, would, I would not, you know, uh, say that I come from my mother's tribe, mm -hmm. but I say I come from uh, my father's tribe. In that case, then that makes me, you know, um, a, a Luo, 
um, mm. in every sense of the word, mm -hmm. uh, culturally and you know, um, if if need be, uh, politically. Mm. Uh, so I, I totally do not agree uh, with the statement that uh, ethnicity or tribes do not exist. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Javis, the main argument is that you know ethnicity has never been a problem. It's politicians who are using it uh, to their advantage, and that's why we're seeing very sharp divisions between these ethnic groups. Uh, what's your observation on that? It's politicians who are a problem, not ethnicity, of course. Mm -hmm. But they, there is what I may want to term as the elite capture of society. And these, especially the elitist politicians, who want to exploit ethnic interests or the ethnic tag for mm -hmm. purposes of political mobilization. And let us remember that the question of the ethnic being or reality mm -hmm. itself is not at issue. Yes. But the kind of conflicts we witness in society today, including here in Kenya, mm -hmm. whether you want to look at it in the conflicts in the South Sudan or what even happened years ago in Mali or Morocco or what's happening between the Hausa and other uh, communities in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you realize that one, it is the struggle for scarce resources, mm -hmm. the question of non-inclusivity mm -hmm. in governance, and the question of communities being captured mm -hmm. by elite groups within the political circles. Mm -hmm. And that itself leads to conflicts. Mm -hmm. Now, an argument that Brother Mark Bichach made earlier, mm -hmm. rejecting the presence of there being tribes, etc. I find it, in a way, a mirror of an argument that was made years ago by Hag Trevor Roper, mm -hmm. who rejected even the existence of African history and Africa itself. Mm -hmm. And one thing is that to, to throw cold water on that kind of argument is that these are not just academic arguments when we say that uh, groups or ethnic groups do exist. Mm -hmm. They are ontological realities. Mm -hmm. And an anthropologist, for example, in studio today will form up that argument that man by nature is a social animal. And when you look at the social nature of a human being, then there are those anthropological realities, the social traits mm -hmm. and ties and associations that one depends on. Now look at it, for example, the question of tribe. Mm -hmm. Tribe itself is a social construct. Mm -hmm. It's now being exploited in the latter times to divide individuals based on how they speak, where they come from, and that kind of balkanization. And that's where the problem is, mm -hmm. to see the challenge instead of the opportunity mm -hmm. within the social construct. Mark, uh, the observers here were saying, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, ethnicity uh, has never been a problem. Of course, that, that one I've already quoted, but uh, it seems like politicians, I'll, I'll come back to that quote later, but it seems like politicians are taking advantage of uh, the current division that is, you know, in these all African countries. And I'm sure you come from the school of thought uh, of, or people who want to completely wipe out ethnicity. You know, one, one of the key things that you, you, you need to understand about the history of, of, of Africa and indeed of the world, mm -hmm. I'll give you the problem of apartheid. Apartheid was about discrimination on the basis of race. There's a certain uh, a, a discrimination that happened among the people they call the colored. Mm -hmm. And it did not matter whether your father or mother was the one that was black, but for as long as you are a product of mixing the races, you are called a colored. Mm -hmm. So the argument that you automatically inherit the ethnicity and the biological background of your father does not hold water. Mm -hmm. And this is what I mean. One mm -hmm. of the things that we must begin to realize as human beings is that we are all one race. There is a research that was done by a DNA firm mm -hmm. and they asked a number of people, which nationality do you think you are? And someone would say, I'm a Puerto Rican, I'm from Ireland, because that's what you believed your mother was from. Mm -hmm. But when you go down to the DNA, you'll find that in every lawyer, there's a bit of Nigerian, there's a bit of Congolese, there's a bit of everything. We are all one people. So mm -hmm. I'm not denying that we've created illusions of, of tribe. We have. We've created illusions as well over time mm -hmm. that the Aryan race, okay, or aka the German race, was superior to every other race. Mm -hmm. We've created 
the rules around banning certain ethnicities from our communities, believing that we are different from them. All of those things are not real, and this is what I'm speaking to. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, humanity is one. So, so Mark, let me correct me if I'm wrong. Or what you're saying basically is that you don't have a problem with ethnicity. It's only that when it's used negatively? Absolutely, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying, because all of these are constructions of our own imaginations, and therefore when we realize that they are not things that divide us, but things that help to grow the flora and fauna of human culture, then we will not be used by politicians mm. because there's no difference between me, a black person, and a white person called something else. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between me, a Christian, and a Muslim. Uh -huh. There's no difference between me, a lawyer, and someone else who's a Hausa. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Now, now, Hassan, as an anthropologist, from your own experience and observation, and uh, uh, why do you think ethnicity have been so demonized in the continent? Uh, first of all, I would like to respond to Javel, uh, Mark that, um, I mean, he's using different identifications, um, race, you know, ethnicity. Uh, you cannot interchange these. Uh, you have to be clear. If it's ethnicity, then we are talking about ethnicity. Uh, but race is a different, you know, form of identification, and it comes with its own politics and baggage. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I would want to stick with my point that ethnicity, you know, is, is something that is, you know, either constructed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are people who believe it's primordial, that it's a given. Yes. But others uh, know that ethnicity um, is a socially sort of negotiated. Um, identity, um, because you can become, you, it's a matter of being and becoming. Mm -hmm. So I can be, you know, today a Boran or, you know, a Kikuyu, but tomorrow if uh, the situation permits, you know, I can, be, you know, because I know Somali probably, then I can become Somali. So mm -hmm. there are issues. We need to accept that ethnicity is not, you know, fixed. Mm -hmm. um, it's very fluid <laughs> and people draw on different, you know, identities. And, 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 and ethnic, uh, so they wear different ethnic um, hats depending mm -hmm. on their context. Yes. Uh, but I would want to go on to your point about whether ethnicity is the problem in politics. Uh, but um, I mean, countries like Tanzania, for example, you know, have more ethnic groups than we do. Um, so is Zambia has, you know, a, a lot of uh, ethnic uh, groups as well. But um, I mean, why did? For example, uh, Malimu Julius Nyerere succeed in creating the Taifa la Tanzania. Mm -hmm. I mean, apart from obviously the dichotomy of the uh, mainland and, and, and the island and all you know that politics, mm -hmm. but um, ethnicity is not particularly you know a bad element of that politics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, we need to look you know uh, at history. Um, the nature of decolonization in this country, for example, mm -hmm. um, basically look at Kanu and Kadu and how you know they were formed on ethnic basis. You can't believe that you know in 1960, uh, early 1960s, mm -hmm. you know uh, the Luo and the Kikuyu are on the same side in Kanu, you know against the Kamatusa and uh -huh. others. And today, Hassan, what we are having is a different sort of image Allah, where Allah. previous groups that have you know aligned uh, their interest and politics mm. are now becoming mortal enemies almost. Uh -huh. uh, Javas, you've heard there what Hassan says. He's an anthropologist, of course, and uh, he says that, you know, ethnicity is not necessarily a negative element in politics. Do you agree with him? Ethnicity has had an immense contribution mm -hmm. in Kenyan politics and continental politics. Is it negative? Does it have any negative? Does it have this, negative or positive? And uh, this contribution... Politics? This contribution is twofold. Mm -hmm. One is positive, the other is negative. However, what we have seen being advanced time and again is the ethnic, uh, rather is the negative side or the negative element of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Here in Africa, here in Kenya, and even all over the world, whether we want to remember, for example, the uh, in, you know, Nazi Germany, whether we want to remember whatever happened in Mount Elgon mm -hmm. here in Kenya, whether they want to remember what happened in Wagala Massacre, whether they want to remember what happened and continues to happen. Mm -hmm. Mark, um, can, can I loan you a word for that? It's uh, Asan, not Asan, ethnicity, but ethnocentrism is the problem. <laughs> you, you, you see, you see. <laughs> Let's you see, just finish you, his point and then we'll come you to see. you. Yes, I agree with everything he says. Exactly. I just wanted to loan that word to him for tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Thank you for that uh, fiduciary generosity in terms of word that you, you know, I should use <laughs> for purposes of this argument, Hassan. Mm -hmm. And um, if we are also again to recall what happened in this country after the 2007 mm -hmm. elections, 
the Madoadoa concept during the campaigns, yeah. all that has to do with ethnic balkanization that has got a negative uh, or seen through negative lenses. Mm -hmm. But if we were to tap into ethnicity or the positive ethnicity, then it can lead to various positive dividends mm -hmm. in society or in Kenya today. However, we need also to bring ourselves expeditiously to an appreciation mm -hmm. that politicians or the elitist groups in society may not easily permit us uh -huh. to tap into the positive so, so, so Javas, which outweighs the other? Is it the positive elements or the negative elements? Today, because we have the Lord Resistance Army in Uganda because of ethnicity, the genocide in uh, Rwanda. You've talked about the post-election violence in Kenya. So which outweighs the other? When the plan of Rwandese president in 1994 was downed on April the 6th in the evening, Juvenal Abiyarimana and his uh, Burundian counterpart, Cyprien Ntiamira, mm -hmm we realized that it was about the negative politics and the negative ethnicity that was at, at play. The, Rwand the Rwandan genocide that pitted the Hutus and the Tutsis is negative side of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. When you go to Uganda and what happened there, when you go to even uh, Ethiopia today, when you look at what is continuing to happen even in the Congo mm -hmm. and in Burundi, then you realize it is about the negative ethnicity being exploited, and that itself continues to be a danger in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mark, do, do you agree with Jarvis that you its know, uh, ethnicity, if used negatively, might turn out to be a danger in the continent? Any time you group human beings based on their biology or on their history, it has always come out negative throughout the history of the world. You start from the First World War, Second World War, the various divisions even of, of Slovakia and, and other places have always been driven by the identification of people either by religion, by race, or by ethnicity. Anytime in human history we've done that, we've always gone wrong. And that's why the transition that Martin Luther King spoke about becomes critical, where we begin to judge people by the content of their character mm -hmm. and not the color of their skin, the tongue of their creed, or whatever cultures and pr practices pretend to pretend to become their identity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying any form of division that we see within humanity does not exist. It is our imagination. And you can form a science about it. And you can have theories of whether we are cultured into our tribe or we are born into it. Mm -hmm. Because the questions become, if a woman is married into the Luya community, has she stopped being Luo? Then did her Luoness really exist? If it was something that existed and that was tangible, mm -hmm. regardless of marriage, it would have hold, held water throughout. So the fact of the matter is this. We as humanity need to walk into a dimension where we do not divide each other based on race and ethnicity or religion and we're able to judge each other on the content of our character. Because any time we judge based on those three, we have made a mistake and I dare anyone to tell me one time where any nation has succeeded by holding on to their tribe and we can start with South Africa. Ibrahim. Hassan, do you think there's any nation that has succeeded by holding on to their tribe? Um, I mean, we are moving to a larger unit. Obviously, the you know, ethnic identity um, uh, competes with, with the national identity most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, different uh, solutions have been proposed. You know, ethnic federalism in, in, in Ethiopia that uh, Javas mentioned earlier, was it, Mark? Um, our own, you know, devolution and, you know, other sort of mechanisms to mm -hmm. try and show that you know these are not necessarily competing identities but we need to look beyond ethnicity as well and look at the nature of the state uh, so if you the, the state is conceived you know as we say as a cake a national one at that mm -hmm. and you know everybody is there to rep like get you know as much uh, share, you know, as possible. Mm -hmm. And then comes the issues of exclusion. You know, you know groups that are excluded definitely tend to uh, form some kind of ethnic alliances to try and also uh, get the national cake. So once mm -hmm. we, 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 we make, you know, the nation look like the ultimate prize, then competitive politics is obviously inevitable. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
I don't know, we kind of need to, to ring fence, you know, uh, ethnicity with the issue of, you know, nationalism and also, you know, see uh, how nations are formed or are dismembered based on ethnicity. Someone mentioned yes. South Sudan, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's Eritrea and other groups speak the same language, uh, share, you know, a lot of other biological characteristics, but mm -hmm. because of the nature of, you know, yes. uh, nation building, then they tend to differ a lot. I mean, there's the case of Cameroon where we have the Anglophone and the Francophone groups uh -huh. trying to secede from each other. So it's, it's, it's about discrimination, it's about exclusion, it's about building, you know, boundaries and hardening lines, uh, if you like, as, you know, you quoted Barack Obama earlier, and he said it's the hardening of lies lines and the embrace of fundamentalism that mm -hmm. will doom us all. Well said, Hassan. Javas, I heard you wanted to respond to what Mark said earlier. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. As a philosophical pugilist, I would not want to argue, and I cannot take on Martin Luther King Jr., and I agree with him that we need to judge individuals from uh, the content of their character. And when we look at it, even that quote itself, then you realize there is, even ethnicity itself has got its own character. Mm -hmm. Let us take a mental flight to uh, Sudan. Initially, before even uh, that separation, the black Sudanese were facing off with the Arab Sudanese. Mm -hmm. And then when they got their own independence, today, the Noir and the Dinka are fighting off civil, you know, fiercely in a civil war. Mm -hmm. And that itself, we can see that the negative attributes or the negative character of ethnicity itself is self-evident. And uh, I agree with Hassan, yes, ethnicity itself is a form of identity. Mm -hmm. When ethnicity is exploited, negatively, then we find ourselves to what Thomas Hobbes termed as a life that is nasty, brutish, and short. Mm -hmm. And that always is, is the Javis, outcome of yes, negative let's, let's make it more practical for our viewers here. Let's say an individual or a voter, for instance, let me drag into politics a bit, but we'll, I'll be very general. Let's say a certain voter goes out to a polling station and then exercises his democratic right, but he votes for a candidate not best of his car because of his character or his manifesto, but he votes for that candidate based on uh, that candidate's ethnic group. Is there something wrong with that? Well, there is something wrong just as much as there is something right with that. And I take it from this angle. One, mm -hmm. that when an, a voter in Kenya today, whether that vote is in Kasipul Kabondo, whether that voter is in Kilifi or in Changamwa, whether that voter is in Nyeri, and they elect to vote for a particular presidential candidate, for instance, uh, based on identity, and mm -hmm. here I'm talking about ethnic identity, is because they're looking at the possible potential or imagined benefits that are likely to accrue uh -huh. by having this so, preferred so, so candidate Javis, in office. we're almost out of time. So what's the difference between that and census? Well, basically, here you realize that it is the private interest, the personal interest and aspiration that makes an individual or a voter to prefer a particular candidate because of the similar or, uh, you know, the, because of the ethnic identity that is similar to his or hers. Mm -hmm. And that is with the possibility of imagined or potential benefits that may come with that, maybe because of development uh, being preferred. Even if, that, even if that leader is a dictator, right? Well, basically, when it comes to personal choices and interests, mm -hmm. the individual most of the time will not look at that higher aspect that tag of dictator, you know, a dictator or dictatorial nature mm -hmm. of that individual. They look at what are the primary, real uh, benefits that may accrue from having such a leader in office. Mark? You know, one, one of the key things to, uh, to note to my fellow panelists is, number one, none of them has given me an example of a nation that has succeeded by continued expression of ethnicism. One of the realities of modern human living is this, mm -hmm. that we have edu enough education and enough exposure to know that on a basic DNA level, there's only one human race. And at that level, the only way to succeed is to come into a position where we have a shared value. What is shared value? The mm -hmm. common benefit of humanity. Anytime we have drawn lines, we've gone to war. Anytime we've drawn lines, we've made mistakes. The reality of the matter is we need to blur those lines. Blur the line mm -hmm. between Luo and Kamba, between mm -hmm. Kikuyu and Kalenjin. When those lines disappear, as they did in Europe, let's not forget 
but that we're, German we're yet to in get this, there, you right? You see, one thing is that uh -huh. Mark let, is let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. Let him finish. Let me finish. Actually, we're almost out of time. Let, let's let's Mark, remember. And this will be your final comment. Uh -huh. let, let's let's remember that if you look at Germany, there were Saxon Germans, there were uh, Bavarian Germans. Today, they are one nation. What does that tell you? If we want to succeed, we must begin to look at character and forget ethnicity if we want to move forward because ethnicity is a creation that we created and decided to live a certain way and we can therefore uncreate it and create a new way to live our lives. Hassan, I can see you keenly listening to Bichachi there, your final comment. No, I totally agree with his nationalist sentiment, unification, uh, but we need to also be you know, alive to the reality. I mean, you earlier said all we are saying is abstract and academic. Um, you didn't put it that way. You were kinder. But um, I mean, what he's saying is basically, okay, let's be one, let's dissolve all our differences and all that, but I don't know. I mean, the nature of humanity is that, you know, you tend to have some sense of, you know, identification. So national identification is, as, is not, you know, less problematic. Mm -hmm. um, so when you try to demonize ethnicity and say it's, you know, highly problematic, leads to conflicts and all that, mm -hmm. I mean, nationalism, you know, you are seeing what is happening in the Europe that is giving us as a good example. You know, the flourishing of the right-wing parties that is based on nothing but a very myopic and, you know, unitary way of looking at identity and, and saying that, you know, we don't I'm want other people. Javas, very quickly, you have well, less than a minute. Can well, you make uh, your final comment? Well, Mark has been oscillating between polar positions of identities. <laughs> and here, one of them is the question of ethnicity. The other one is the question of race, etc. And even the issue of citizenship. Mm -hmm. However, when you use the term, uh, uh, you know, demonize and ethnicity, then you want to look or extract positive sentiment from that, then there is nothing positive from demons. However, I think we must come down to the conclusion that negative ethnicity, even in this country today, is that which drives us to consistent and constant conflicts mm -hmm. that never bring nationalistic benefits mm -hmm. to us, even in matters development. Thank you very much, Javas uh, Bigambo, for your input. Of course, Javas is a governor's expert. Mark Bichachi, political analyst, thanks a lot as usual for your input, as well as Hassan Kuchore, who is an anthropologist. Many thanks, gentlemen, uh, for giving us uh, that uh, lesson on you know, ethnicity and how it affects African uh, politics. Unfortunately, we are out of time. We have to end that discussion. But for now, let's take a look at our images of the day and the Kenya Plus Size Fashion Weekend 2017. Brought together designers, models, and style enthusiasts to celebrate full uh, figured women in Africa and dress them in trendy clothes. Now in its second edition, the event drew participants from Kenya as well as uh, the West African country of Ghana. Its aim was to give women of various shapes and sizes a chance to uh, fit outfits as well as meet professionals in fashion. Those are the pictures there. <laughs> appreciate that uh, Africans are known to be plus size and uh, being plus size is also looked down upon so myself and Francisca who's the CEO of uh, plus fabulosity we decided that it's important to come to, to bring together that plus size community for them to be able to find a voice for them to be able to do some of the things that they fear or imagine that they cannot do. And that's what Plus Fabulosity is about. It gives a plus size man or woman a voice. It's hard, it's a bit hard because you have to communicate with the model regularly because others will say like, don't show my legs, I don't know my, my bust, I don't, I don't want it to be low, I want it to like cover everything. So, you know, for small models, they can show anything, they don't mind. When you go get a material, it's normally six yards. So I'll use the whole material by myself. The same material will be used on two people. So I think the pricing is already there. You're already using more material than you're supposed to. So I'll be charged higher, pricier. My pricing will be a bit different from what 
the, other, the others will get. For a very long time, we have been neglected, we have been ignored, which is not right because we exist, we deserve to look good, we deserve to to feel fabulous in our own skins. So I think I think I think plus plus fabulosity is great. It's a good idea. Um, I love the show today. I like the way the women, the plus size models, are able to handle their body. They feel very confident in themselves. It, it brings out the beauty of the dress. That's that's the basis of, of every every attire. The way you wear it, the way you handle yourself makes it more beautiful. So I love what I saw here today. Yeah. I loved it because they, they are basically um, uh, courageous when it comes to their body, you know. They have no shame and that's wonderful, you know, to see them embracing themselves. Now, before we go over to our bottom line editorial tonight, let's cross over to the northern part of this continent where engineers in Morocco are preparing to test Africa's first high-speed railway this week with trains reaching 320 kilometers per hour. Yes, you heard me right. The country's rail office has said now one train reached 275 kilometers per hour on Monday along a stretch of track between the northern cities of Kenitra uh, that Morocco officials said was already the fastest train on the African continent, the link between Casablanca and Tangiers, where the capital Rabat will slash journey times between the North African countries' economic hubs by almost two thirds to just over two hours. Morocco's TGV, which gets its name from the French abbreviation for high speed uh, trains, is set to enter service in summer 2018. And there's no way going to end our show tonight without our African proverb tonight. Let's take a look. I'm not quite sure about that proverb. We're going to, um, I have some contacts in Ethiopia. I'm going to confirm it <laughs> with them. Anyway, on our Twitter poll tonight, we did ask you, do you think that Matiangi's move to ban NASA protest within Nairobi CBD is justifiable? 44% of you said yes, 56% of you said no. Let me just quick, quickly run through some of your feedback here. At uh, Dismas Kogo says, yes, it's for the good of all business, car owners, and the rest of the public. At Ezekiel Obilo says, uh, demos are within the law. Matiangi is out of order. And then at uh, Bill Shermogura says he's causing more problems. The constitution is very clear on demonstration. One final one, no, CS Matiangi should provide security to demonstrators. Continue the conversation. Remember, our hashtag is bottom line Africa. And finally, here is the bottom line tonight. Many politicians across the continent of Africa, that is, continue to use ethnicity to promote themselves and inflict maximum political damage on their opponents. The advent of multi-party politics was characterized by the margins of ethnic-based political parties, a situation that is still sadly in place in most, if not all, African countries. Today, ethnicity and conflict have replaced social harmony, diversity and development. Some argue that dictatorships contained ethnic clashes to a large extent and that democracy has again revived ethnic clashes as politicians make it an issue to gain political mileage although that's still debatable. Unless and until Africa develops to a stage where ethnicity becomes irrelevant in politics and political organizations, regrettably, poverty, instability, and the cycles of conflict will continue to inflict this beautiful continent. And that's the bottom line tonight. Many thanks for watching. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim. Remember, this program, as always, is aired from Monday to Thursday, every weeknight at 10 p.m. and it goes up to 11 p.m. And... Up until Monday next week, bye-bye and enjoy the rest of your night.